Big Country Politics on KTAB continues. Big Country Politics joining us. We're actually joining him, James <laughs> Hicks, in the DA's office. Thank you for being on our show. Good to be back. Well, we want to get right into it. We want to talk about jail numbers because you spoke about this recently mm -hmm. in commissioner's court meetings. Uh, right. What's the problem right now? Well, the problem is kind of hard to dissect. Uh, we always have a jail population issue, but the COVID crisis, the pandemic, has put brakes on things that no one expected in the past. No one expected TDCJ just to stop taking inmates. Uh, no one expected that from a state or a county facility to another county facility, we wouldn't be able to transfer uh, inmates to dispose of cases. So what has really transpired is the more my prosecutors work in the cases, the court system to uh, uh, penalize or institutionalize criminals the farther we get behind at the jail because the jail is the warehouse for inmates now. So when somebody, when you guys do your job and somebody goes to prison, mm -hmm. they're sitting at the Taylor County Jail. They go the right back to the same place they began. Because their Texas prisons aren't taking any prisoners right now. Yes, yes. And, and the sheriff and I have spoken about this. There's two problems that, that really exist. Uh, hopefully uh, the, the jail is going to be uh, somewhat relieved the mid-July because we're understanding that TDCJ is going to take accept prisoners with conditions. We don't know what those restrictions are, but TDCJ is going to accept prisoners uh, mid-July. But here's, here's the two problems that I've spoken with the sheriff about. Number one, we can't move anything to TDCJ. That's the that institutional division. That's a problem. But, but the other problem is parole, and, and parole has been prevented from coming. Uh, normally they would make appointments with institutionalized individuals here at the county, make appointments, maybe parole hearings, things of that nature. Because of the pandemic, they haven't made an appearance before the county in, a, in probably several months. So I've got, well, and, and it may be the same numbers the sheriff gave you, but out of an 826 max capacity, I've got 750 inmates over there. The thing is, if I could move parole, that 117 out somewhere, or get them interviewed, and I could uh, actually get the inmates to prison, that go to prison, like 137, we would be down to the lowest number we've been to in inmate population in a long time. Well, you mentioned that in the commissioner's court meeting. Mm -hmm. You said you guys were making a difference. We are. Before COVID, I mean, making a difference as far as jail population before COVID hit. And then now those numbers are steadily rising up because of the problems that you just mentioned. Well, and, and what, we, what I did in my office was... I moved a prosecutor from misdemeanor to felony yeah, to start moving those cases out of the jail. The sheriff and I have worked fairly closely in, in trying to monitor the jail because, like I said, jail population is not a new problem. It, and it's not going to be a problem that's going to be eradicated tomorrow. We're going to incarcerate bad people for their misconduct. That's my position in life. We're going to protect the innocent, the civilians, the, the, the public from ill-willed people. That's our job. But here's the problem. They don't have to sit over there for an extended period of time now. And we were making a dent. It's my belief, no, no big secret, that, that the uh, drug problem, primarily methamphetamine, has uh, expanded somewhat. Uh, we were making a significant movement in changing those non-disposed, those felony pending cases that were in custody over to TDC inmates. The, the thing is, if they won't accept them, we're not really making any headway anymore. Uh, I think the courts are still making a huge uh, difference. Uh, 
they've been ordered not to have over eight people in a courtroom at any particular time, yet we're still processing up to 10 to 15 cases a week in each court. Uh, that's huge. Uh, we're, 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 Taylor County's making a difference. Taylor County's probably one of uh, 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 a few, I wouldn't know if it's the minority or not, but hasn't canceled a grand jury during the COVID epidemic. A lot of grand juries over the state of Texas have just not met. Uh, we haven't missed a one. We've reset some, but we haven't missed a one. Uh, we're doing our part to try to get the circulation uh, back through the system. But the system, and, and, and I didn't realize this till I took office, but the system, my office has so many different facets. And that jail is, is an important factor to all of them. Inmates coming in that have done things that they shouldn't have done, uh, waiting trial, uh, inmates that have violated their probation, that are waiting uh, their reckoning on that, inmates that are waiting to go to TDC after they've been tried, either by a jury or a judge. There's just so many different individuals over there that we were making a huge difference until TDC had to close their doors. Because Hopefully they're going to open back up. And you guys are waiting uh, in July at, at some point. I spoke to the sheriff yesterday. He thinks mid-July. The, the trick is to know the restrictions. Mid-July, it's our belief that TDCJ will start taking inmates with some restrictions. We don't know what those restrictions are yet. I haven't seen them. I don't know if the sheriff has or not. Well, and when we come back on Big Country Politics, I want to talk to you about what your office is doing now to alleviate the problem, because you talked a little bit about that okay. in the Commissioner's Court, too. So when we come back, we'll talk to the DA about alleviating the problem of overcrowding at the Taylor County Jail.